Dog FPV. Today we're checking out the Beta FPV Express LRS. Um, it's the X0032TUF S9. It's been out for a while. Um, they actually have a newer version that uh, actually, this is a 500 milliwatts, which is more than enough. And they have a, a now a one watt version of this uh, very similar type module. But uh, this is the one that I picked up. Um, it's been sitting in this box for a while, um, right before uh, Christmas time. But I just now had a chance to get it out of the box. And the uh, reason why I'm upgrading to this over, um, I've been running Express LRS for several months now. Um, I started out with this Happy Model 2.4 gigahertz uh, ES24TX uh, LRS. Uh, TX module. Um, it uh, thing I don't like about it is not that it's only 200 milliwatts. The 200 milliwatts for what I use it for, which is whoops and uh, uh, smaller three-inch quads. Uh, so I think uh, my biggest problem with this, I actually uh, was uh, flying my uh, Flywoo uh, Nano Baby. 40 millimeter quad and I did have a fail safe and I thought oh well what's going on here is it the is it the Flywoo Nano Baby and uh, then when I flipped my radio over I noticed there was no LEDs on well the problem with this module is and I think people have reported on this it just doesn't seat correctly um, you can actually lift this thing out as you can see very easily it doesn't really latch it's uh, it just kind of doesn't snap into place so I thought, well, um, I would upgrade to this and see how well it snaps into the JR module bay. And, uh, and then with that, you get the screen. So we'll go over what's in the box here. Uh, as you can see, you get the antenna and you get the module itself. Um, you also get um, this flat antenna if you want to replace the one that uh, comes with it. Is, uh, this one right here might get a little better range with this uh, antenna here. So before we upgrade the firmware, let me go ahead and see how well this uh, module plugs in. See, and you get that uh, happy little snap in place with these tabs. So you do um, get a positive tab placement um, that you didn't get with the happy model module. This one, you can definitely tell it's snapped into place. You can, you can even see the tabs um, move out to the side, locking it in place. So this definitely is worth the upgrade. And again, you know, this one was okay, but um, if you're getting, sort of knock your radio around a little bit, it, it, it comes loose. So that's not acceptable. So <laughs> um, definitely uh, just from the fact that this snaps into the JR Bay a lot better. Um, I already can tell that this one's better. I decided just to stick with a more traditional style antenna. Um, this one kind of sticks out further and you can't fold it away. So when I put it in my backpack, I think this, well, I'll, time will tell. <laughs> I might go to this, but I think uh, in my backpack when I tried it, this fits a little better versus this hanging out here um, away. It can kind of bend up, but um, for now, I, this thing has insane range anyway, so I'm not too concerned. I'm not sure if this acts like a patch antenna or not, but you can't really kind of face it that direction. It kind of flops down, so I think I'm just going to try this to start with because it fits better in my backpack. One of the complaints that people had on this was that a uh, USB-C cable wouldn't plug into it, but at least the version of cable I have um, seems to work fine, plugs in fine. Um, I think they're on some USB-C cables. This is a little thicker here. I know on the one watt version, they kind of widen this out a little bit or move the connector over slightly, but uh, I have the 500 milliwatt version that they're complaining about, but it plugs in fine for the type of cable I'll have. I'll go ahead and put the link below the cable that I'm using. This isn't a full tutorial on how to uh, set up Express LRS. I'll go ahead and link the 
the getting started guide URL link it goes through everything you need to know this is just a quick overview of what I do so once I've brought up the Express LRS configurator version 1.3.3 um, I'm going to be picking the latest version at the time of this video, which is version 2.1.0. The reason why this one's important to me is because it has joystick, joystick support uh, for the module. Um, as far as the device category, it's beta FPV 2.4 gigahertz. The device is beta FPV 2400TX micro. I'm going to be flashing over Wi-Fi. I've already downloaded the latest Lua script, and you're going to want to do that as well and put that in to the tools directory of the radio. Um, I uh, go ahead and um, I'm gonna be uh, flashing in standard mode. I do set up a binding phrase and um, you want to, in most cases, uh, select the UART inverted. I'm uh, running a Radio Master TX16S. There is a wiki on that, as you can see, and a URL link to see whether or not your radio um, needs this set or not, but most of the time it is set. And then you wanna unlock higher power. If you want tele telemetry data, which is under extra data, or you want to definitely check box that one. Um, also, if you um, want to um, basically flash over your network versus using the module as a Wi-Fi hotspot, um, you would go ahead and put in your home Wi-Fi SSID here and then your Wi-Fi password. And you might want to change the timeout value. Um, mine is set to 20 seconds. You might want to set it a little bit higher. And what that is is just how quickly it will time out and then go into hotspot mode where you um, aren't doing it across your Wi-Fi network, but basically the hotspot for the module itself. So you can play around with that if you don't think 20 seconds is long enough timeout value. And then you just hit uh, build. And it's gonna go through the building process now. Once it completes the build process, it'll have a, a pop-up window and it will have a file in it that you need to, which is a binary file. And you need to cop copy that into a folder that uh, you have access to so you can use that to flash your module. So I'm going to execute the Lua script. So I'm going to go ahead and hit system. And I'm going to go down to the Express LRS Lua script. It's going to run that. And then I'm going to put it into Wi-Fi connect, connectivity, and then enable Wi-Fi, and enter. Now that I have the Wi-Fi running, um, I should have a hotspot that I'm going to connect to. And I'm not going to be flashing it over my home network. I'm just going to um, flash it uh, via the hotspot method because I am upgrading to 2.1. You can see that I have the Express LRS hotspot. Now that I've um, connected to the modules hotspot and I'm gonna go ahead and um, browse for the file that I just built and it'll fill in here. It's a beta FPV 2400TX micro you can see the version's 2.1. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit update. And now it's flashing the module. Okay, um, it's almost complete. And we updated successfully. And now we're done. Well, this is way cool. Now that I've upgraded to 2.1.0, the joystick actually works as a joystick versus just as a push button. So let's go ahead and long press. And you can scroll through by going jog wheel down. You can update. So you can scroll to what you want to select. And then you can go to the side to get out of that menu. So let's go back to long pressing. 
by just pushing it down. And we'll go ahead and uh, select bind mode. There's a neat little icon there. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then um, press again to send bind request. Now it's in binding mode. <laughs> way cool so um, you definitely want to upgrade to 2.1 because the joystick actually works um, with what was loaded from the factory it's just a push button but this actually enables the, the joystick and you can uh, exit out of there by just uh, pushing the joystick to the left um, so definitely worth upgrading to 2.1 so next I'm going to go through the things that excite me about um, Express LRS 2.1. Um, the first, of course, that we already talked about, which is having the, the joystick work on the uh, transmitter module. And I'm not going to mess with the switch mode, but if you're a fixed wing pilot, you'd probably want to set this to wide. Then um, aux channels 2 through 8, not aux 1, but 2 through 8, you have 128 positions. Um, so that would be something that you might use for flaps. I'm not a fixed wing pilot. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at hybrid. Aux one is a two position switch. Aux two through seven, you can set up, it's a three bit. So it's two position, three position, or a six position um, switch. And then aux eight is a four bit, which is uh, has 16 positions. So that's fine for me. Um, so I'll just probably leave it as hybrid. This is the one thing that I really like is that you can put dynamic on, which means that it's more like TBS Crossfire, where you can say the max power is uh, four, 500 milliwatts, but if it doesn't need that, it's going to be running at a lot lower output power. And then you can, uh, so you can set that, I'm setting that to on, um, but you can actually put it on an aux channel as well, or you can just turn this off. And then you can also set up your fan threshold, but I'm just going to leave that at 250 milliwatts. Uh, so that is, uh, I'll go ahead and hit back here. Um, so that's one thing that I really like. The next thing is the um, joystick. You can put it into Bluetooth mode, <laughs> and so you can use it. Um, go ahead and now um, you can use it as a, um, flight simulator connection via Bluetooth um, via the Express LRS module, which is way cool. And uh, I, I don't know what the latency is, so um, if you're concerned about that, that might not be the way to go. But it's nice that you don't have to have cables. Um, you can USB cables. You can just use uh, Bluetooth for gaming uh, for flight simulators. So that's another pretty exciting thing. And then on the uh, last one that I'll probably end up using a lot is being able to control the VTX uh, via Express LRS. And uh, yeah, you can send a packet and then uh, set your band and channel and power level and whether pit mode is on all from your radio. So I think that's fantastic. So for me, that's uh, those features that I just went over are more than enough for me to recommend that you would want to upgrade. So let's go ahead and give you my final thoughts on the Beta FPV um, Express LRS module. I think the pros are, um, it definitely is uh, a better fit for the JR Bay on my Radio Master radio. Um, it snaps into place very securely, unlike the Happy model that I had. Also, um, you know, at 500 milliwatts, I mean, that is uh, plenty of power. In fact, 250 milliwatts for what I fly, um, I think is uh, plenty. But this, in dynamic mode, it gives you the option. And in this case, you can see it's outputting uh, 10 milliwatts. But if it needs more power, it'll automatically, um, as you fly further out, go up to 500 milliwatts. Um, there is a one watt version of this. Um, which is about $10 more. So um, another uh, pro of this thing is it's only $39.99 US, which I think is a great value. 
Now I know that you would say, well, um, beta FPV, um, you know, they're, they can have reliability problems, so time will tell as to whether or not this is going to hold up. Um, so I think that uh, it's definitely a value play. I mean, you can buy, I just looked at, like they have an A-axis uh, Flying 4 ELRS, and they want $139 for it. I'm not going to be paying $139 for an Express LRS module. I just think that's too steep a price. Now, it might be more reliable, but... Um, at that price, you know, if I'm going to want, if I'm going to be um, wanting to fly something that I think is uh, super reliable, I'm probably going to go with TBS Crossfire um, or Tracer. Um, I know that Express LRS has lower latency, but um, the hardware of, of uh, TBS is tried and true for me. I, you know, have a lot of T, uh, uh, TBS Crossfire quads and uh, I've never had a problem with them. I think eventually Express LRS will be a huge competitor with both Ghost and TBS Crossfire and TBS Tracer. Um, it actually has lower latency than TBS Tracer. Ghost is slightly better as far as latency, but um, the protocol itself is incredible and the feature set. Um, I'm just a little iffy on the hardware itself, so I think, you know, I've already um, started converting my some of my toothpicks over to Express LRS and whoops, you know, I um, uh, I bought a Meteor uh, 65 Pro um, and I went with Express LRS because of uh, I think it's a way better protocol than FR Sky is um, so um, D8 so definitely for whoops and that sort of thing, it's uh, uh, I think it's uh, going to take over that market space, and then eventually, like I said, it will compete uh, with uh, the TBS Crossfires and and Tracers and Ghost. Um, the other uh, thing I like, I do like this little LED in the back. Um, I usually use Lua Script, so it's not a huge deal, but having this um, little uh, joystick back here to make quick changes, um, just flipping the radio over is is pretty convenient so and the um, LED is pretty cool on it for configuring things uh, one of the the cons is um, you know the fan is a little loud not too bad so that's what the fan sounds like so do I think the beta FPV is something that I would recommend and my answer is yes um, I think it is a good value um, of course Again, time will tell on the reliability, but um, I'm happy with it so far. So with that, uh, if you have any questions, um, post them in the comments below. And uh, as always, thanks for watching my channel.